Hey everybody, it's Allison, sdlprostretch.com. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, today is yoga and stretching video number three, and we're going to go through back bends. As usual, if anything hurts, please stop doing it. And um, if you've got any conditions that you know you can't open up your chest or whatever um, for medical reasons or what have you, then just opt out of those exercises because we're going to start easy and we're going to just kind of get more and more to the back bends and um, the crane's just going to keep going. You can get off at whatever station you like. Let's start on the mat. I've got, I've got a bolster today. You can use some stacked up blankets. Quilts work really well. Um, pillows, but they aren't that stable. <clears throat> and then I have a strap, a, a chair. That's for later. And some blocks and um, pillows and stuff. So just go ahead and sit. Now, if this is too low for you and it's not comfortable and your knees are way up here, then you might want to get up a little higher. Just stack them up. Grab your strap. And we're going to take the strap kind of wide. The wider you go, um, the easier it will be. So if you're not that flexible in your chest, and you start here, then just kind of let it slide as you go. So we're going to take the strap up, and I need to slide out a little bit to begin, and back, and up and over. So up and back, and if you can go a little bit wider and get all the way back through. There's natural tension on this uh, strap as you pull through. Um, just to keep it steady. So I feel like there's resistance as I'm going up and over, but it may be more that I'm pushing outward. It may be my lats more so than my chest. But I can definitely feel some stretching going on in my chest and my bicep. If you want to add breathing to this, inhale up, exhale over, inhale up, exhale over. Inhale up, exhale over, inhale up, exhale over. And we'll take it one more time over and back. And then you can just kind of set the strap aside. <clears throat> and we're going to move on to the reverse tabletop stretch, which is for your pecs, but also your biceps. So come onto your hips, bring your feet out in front. I like to turn my hands around so that my fingertips are pointing toward my toes, but you can do it any way you want. If it's easier to be here with your fingers out to the side or your fingers back, that's fine too, whichever way is most comfortable for you. So I'm here, I'm gonna puff my chest out and this is as far as you have to go. So um, if you can do that, great. We're just gonna exhale, inhale. Otherwise, you're gonna lift your hips if you can. So puff the chest out, lift the hips, curl the tailbone under, inhale, and exhale down. This is a Kihara stretch for pec minor. I know that might be confusing, but it is. Just think of it as a, a chest stretch, bicep stretch, couple more times. Oh, this is one of my favorite stretches, I have to say. And then we'll come down. 
And then you may want to use your strap for this. You may want a pillow for your head too. We're going to stretch the hamstrings out a little bit um, <clears throat> just so they have less likely, they're less likely to cramp up when we're doing the back bends. So a um, couple options. So the way I like to do it is just um, without a strap, kick one leg up and the other leg is out or wherever you want to put it. And I'm going to lift my chest and take my hands and interlace the fingers around the back of the calf. So here is the resistance. My leg is going to be pushing down. Um, my upper body is going to come along for the ride, but the upper body is going to be my counterbalance. So it's dead weight. As I'm pulling back, the leg is kicking the opposite direction. And then the leg's going to win and the upper back upper body is dragged along for the ride. So just come until you feel it, come down until you feel a stretch and then come back up again. You can also use a strap, which is why I got the strap out so that I can show you. So with this, kind of wrap it around your hands, um, push away and then pull back with the arms. It's a little bit um, less taxing on the upper body and also a little bit easier if you're not <laughs> flexible. So just start where you are. Your foot can be pointed. You can move it into a flexed dorsiflex position if you want. That'll just get more calf into the action. We'll do about three more. and then switch sides. So I'm lifting my chest, interlace the fingers behind the calf. I'm just gonna stretch this leg out, but you can keep it bent if that's easier for you. Just do whatever you feel, whatever feels right. And again, my, my leg is kicking down. My upper body is going to come along for the ride just for a little while. And then I'm gonna let my upper body drag the leg down, but my leg is still pushing this direction. So I'm slowing it down by imagining my heel coming toward the other heel. That way, we're not just yanking the muscle. The muscle's contracting, and we're slowly pulling it into a stretch, which is the definition of a resistance stretch. When a muscle goes from short to long, well, it's contracting against a force, right? You've heard me say it a number of times. Again, you can point or dorsiflex your foot. If you point, you're going to feel it more in the belly of the hamstring. If you dorsiflex, you're going to feel it more in the back of the knee, the calf area. And we'll do a couple more. Again, you can use a strap. today. Whew, all right. And then we're going to roll back up again. Of course, you can roll to your side and push yourself up if that's easier for you. And next, we're going to come into downward dog. So hands and knees. Tuck your toes under. Tilt your tailbone up. Lift your hips. Push your butt back toward the opposite wall behind you, and then start to unfold the legs. We don't want to unfold the legs so much that the back rounds like that. So try to keep your back as flat as possible, and then just pedal out your heels, see how things are feeling. And then we can do the Kihara um, downward dog stretch, or the calf and chest stretch. So lift the heels, shift forward, shift back, slowly lower the heels. Try to pick the toes up if you can. Lift again, shift forward, shift back, and slowly lower the heels. Lift, shift forward, 
Shift back, slowly lower the heels. If you can, tilt the tailbone up and press the chest back toward the thighs. If that doesn't give you a stretch, then I'm not sure where, where I can take you to get you a better calf stretch. We'll do a few more of these. And then we're going to shift forward and drop the knees. Grab your blanket or your um, pillow and something to balance with. If you need a chair, go ahead and grab a chair and put it to the side so that you have something to balance on. So we're going to be doing the kneeling hip flexor stretch. And this is all in preparation for the back bends. Because um, I wouldn't want to just hop right into a bridge or a bow or something like that without doing a little bit of warm up. So we want to get the chest opened up a little bit and we want to get the hip flexors opened up, everything along this front line of the body before we go into back bends. So hip flexor is definitely a, an important one. And if you watch my videos, you know this well, the kneeling hip flexor stretch. We are going to be scissoring our legs together. Imagine this back, this back knee pulling toward the chest the entire time. I'm doing the opposite of sticking my butt out, and I'm going to shift forward with all those actions going on. So your movement, before you start to lose, say, I'm going to, you know, once I, once I start to lose the ability to, this muscle is stretched to its maximum, then what's going to happen is my belly's going to start spilling forward. So try, to, try not to do that. Just um, try to maintain a neutral spine with the pelvis tucked, um, <clears throat> tucked under and the belly button pulling in. So shift forward and back. You should feel something going on right here. In the front of your left hip. Yes, hopefully. And I can even feel I'm starting to lose that posterior tilt as I get to the end of this. So I'm cheating a little bit. And we'll do one more and then switch legs. And I'm just going to leave my pillow right here. I'm going to bring my leg back around, come back into a downward dog, and then shift forward again and bring my left foot forward. So kneeling hip flexor stretch on the other side. Imagine your inner thighs pulling together. This right knee, imagine it pulling toward your chest, like bringing you into a fetal position. Do the opposite of sticking your butt out as you shift forward and back. I hate repeating all those cues, but they are important. And sometimes it's good even just to put your hand on your belly and one hand on your um, sacrum so you can feel what's happening if your pelvis is trying to cheat. Um, it's a good kind of tactile uh, indication that your pelvis is moving around. I know I do this stretch a lot, and um, that's because I, I truly believe that there's one stretch everybody should do every day. It's this one, if you can do it, because we all spend a lot of time sitting, and so these hip flexors get shortened. Couple more. And then we'll move the pillow. I'm going to come back into downward dog. Tuck the toes under, press it up and back. And this time we're going to come into um, a plank, a full plank. Now, if you're not up for doing full plank, please drop your knees. 
And then bring your elbows back toward your ribs as you lower down. As you lower down, kind of try to squeeze your shoulder blades together. Come all the way down to the mat. Roll the shoulders down and back. Squeeze them shoulder blades together and lift the chest. This is a baby cobra. Um, we'll be pushing up a little bit higher if you want to, but for right now, just try to do it. Lift your chest and with your hands up off of the mat. I know, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> and then we're going to um, lift the feet as well. And I want you to bring your hands around behind you, palms down, thumbs out to the side. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Reach back with the hands so that the chest lifts and then lift the feet. We don't want the toes to spiral out to the side. We want them actually to go the opposite direction. So imagine your inner thighs moving up toward the ceiling. And this is locust, Shalabhasana. And release, we're gonna do a few locusts. So roll the shoulders down and back, lift the chest. Here we are. If you wanna make this harder, take your hands behind your head, pull the elbows up toward the ceiling, lift the chest and lift the feet. Whew, this is probably the hardest version of locust. Make sure you're breathing. Play with your breathing. It may be easier for you to exhale on the way up and inhale on the way down. Try it with exhaling on the way up or inhaling on the way up. And then we're going to move on to um, upward dog. So roll the shoulders down and back, lift the chest, and we're going to peel ourselves up off of the mat just as far as you can without, um, without hurting your low back. So any pain in the low back to stop. So roll it up. I'm gonna tuck my toes under behind me, lift my thighs, and I'm gonna lift it all the way up off of the mat. I'm gonna to try to walk my chest through my arms. I'm strong pulling of the belly button in toward the spine and strong pulling of the shoulder blades together and down. So we're not dumping into the pose, we're pushing out. And then press back to downward dog. And then shift forward again. We're gonna lower down to the mat and bring a right arm around in front. Bend your left knee and if you can, grab your foot. Some of you may need to roll on your side and grab the foot this way and then roll back on your belly. Just do whatever you can. You can also use a strap if you need to. It's not the easiest thing in the world because you still have got to find your foot, right? So that's what that would look like. I'm gonna put this strap away. So I'm using this, uh, this forearm as a little bit of um, support right now as I grab my foot. I'm gonna push my pubic bone into the mat and then push my foot into my hand and this, using my forearm and my leg pushing back, it's gonna pull me into this half bow and you can move in and out of it. This is a really good example of how any, pretty much, pretty much any yoga pose can be um, changed into a resistance stretch. We'll do one more and then switch legs. Grab the opposite ankle. I'm gonna push my pubic bone into the mat as much as I can. I'm supporting with my left forearm. My foot is pushing into my right hand and I'm going to lift up and release. few more. And 
and release. And we'll press back to downward dog again. If you, um, if you want to roll over your knees, that's fine. Tuck your toes under and press back to downward dog. And then start to walk your feet toward your hands up to the front of the mat. Bend your knees, place your hand on your chin, uh, shins, lift your chest, and rise to standing. I'm going to back up a little bit so that my head doesn't get cut off, although I think it's going to get cut off probably. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> you can still see what I'm doing. I'm going to use a wall here, and we're going to do a little bit of a dancer. Actually, you could use your chair. If you've got a chair or a table or anything. And dancer, so dancer is one of these poses that is a back bend. It's where you grab your foot and you push your foot back and then you reach forward. So we're going to come down to, you know, what's happening with the pelvis when we do this. So <clears throat> to truly get a quad stretch, it's not just about getting your foot behind you because a lot of times, the hips still bent. So you're really only stretching the bottom part of your quad. You're not stretching all the way up the rectus femoris. So we want to see if we can get this hip position this way. See that? <laughs> this is it. Not this way, this way. So that when you grab your foot, we're going to do that. This should be a stretch for most of you. Then push your foot into the hand and lean forward. That's your dancer. So go ahead and do that a couple times, each leg. Use a chair if you need to balance. I get it. This pose isn't for everyone. <laughs> and then switch legs. Push the foot into the hand. Again, we want to get this pelvis into a posterior tilt, which means imagine your pelvis is filled with water and the water is going to spill out the back. So pushing the foot into the hand, we want to get the pelvis, the belly in, do the opposite of sticking your butt out, the water spilling out the back, and then push the foot into the hand and start to lift the leg behind you and you can lift the opposite arm if you like. I'm changing this dancer into a resistance stretch, as you can tell, by pushing my foot into my hand. All right, so that's that. I thought we'd move into a full quad stretch after this. So your options are, I've got two quad stretches for you. Here's the first. You're on your belly. You're going to take your left knee out to the side. You're going to kind of roll onto your right side a little bit. And I'm just going to prop my head up with my hand, bend my right knee, and grab my foot. Yes, this can be a resistance stretch too. Or you can just hold it. And if you need to use a strap around your foot, that's fine. Often when we're in class, I have to help people into this, kind of help them find their foot or get the strap around their foot so that they can hold it. But it's worth it because this is a really, it's a really nice quad stretch. Otherwise, we're going to do something a little bit more intense. And that would be kneeling like this, or lunging with one foot forward. I got my right foot forward. And um, I'm putting my left hand down. I'm going to bend my back knee and grab the foot. Now, if your hamstring cramps up during these stretches, <laughs> you know what you need to do? You need to stretch your hamstrings again. So go back to the hamstring stretch, or go back to um, downward dog helps a lot too. Because the hamstrings always win. You cannot do back bends if your hamstrings are cramping up. There's just no way. 
So either way, you can do it that way or the other way. And again, I'll show you how I got into that other stretch um, on the floor. And that was, now I'm going to be turning away from you, so maybe I'll turn around the other side. <clears throat> Knee out to the side, prop, bend, and grab the foot. So you're either there or you're on the pillow. And this time, the left foot forward, reach down with the right hand and grab the foot behind you. So you can kind of add a little push and pull here if you want to be true to resistance stretching, moving and resisting the entire time. There's not a lot of motion, but that's okay. That's okay, it's still a resistance stretch. And then we'll come back to downward dog again. Shift forward and lower your knees. Next, camel. And I know some people don't do camel. They don't want to do camel. Um, but camel doesn't have to be as deep as you see it done. So I'll show you what I mean. So traditionally, and there's many ways to get into this pose, your camel is going to be like that. But <laughs> in the interest of not everybody's that flexible, um, and I'm not saying I am that flexible. Um, we're going to just work on the pelvis, the tilt, and the movement. So um, this is actually a resistance stretch for your abdominals. Pull the belly in. Imagine you have a tail, and you're going to pull the tail underneath your legs, in between your legs, and lift the chest, roll the shoulders down and back, and then I'm just going to place my hands right above my butt. Open up the chest and start to lean back. And that's as far as you really need to go. If you want to have a little fun with this, <laughs> then you can start to lean back and forward. This is a great warm up for your quads. And just see how far you can take it. You feel that strong push with your foot into the mat? That's what we want. We want to be pushing the foot into the mat. That's one of the huge, um, it, it's one of the few, the huge points of pressure for, um, to camel so that you can pop your chest out. So we need to have some leverage somewhere. That's where it is, pushing the feet into the mat. And then if you want to make this camel a little bit easier, Take your blocks and put them by your feet. Kind of lean back for them and then pop your chest out. Another, this is my favorite way to do it, is take your blocks, put them flat, and put your toes, I've got my toes tucked under, under the blocks. Now this can get a little harder on your knees, so you may need a blanket. And then we're going to rise. Well, guess what? My heels are right there. <laughs> So I don't have very far to go. Make sure you're breathing in this pose. A lot of people tend to get dizzy or feel nauseous in this pose. It's because most of the time it's because they're not breathing. So it's easy to breathe in. Make sure you're breathing out. Otherwise, the breathing in, in back bends can really kind of up your anxiety, which none of us need right now. And then if you want to go into the full camel, there's two, two ways to do it. One is that you can just, you know, back bend and reach back for your heels and then push with your feet, open the chest. And the other one is you can just start back here, put your hands on your feet. And then I'm going to lean back, lift my hips, push, 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 and come into the camel. A lot of questions. Do I lean my head back? Do I not lean my head back? That's up to you. Um, 
I don't really think it's that great for your neck to lean your head back. So I prefer to keep the neck in a neutral position. All right, next, we got a couple more back bends to do. <laughs> and then we'll do a relaxation back bend. This is bridge. And again, you know, we're going to start easy and then take this uh, to a full back bend. So you can stop at whatever station you want to get off. <laughs> the train's just going to keep moving. All right, I've got my feet hip width distance apart on the mat. I'm going to uh, see how I'm pushing with the back of my head to lift my chest up. I'm going to tuck my shoulder blades to, towards each other, together, and down. And then I'm just going to set them down on the mat so that they are flat. So I've got a little room in my um, lower back, underneath my lower back. And you can do it that way, or you can flatten your whole back out. That's up to you. And then I'm going to put my hands, palms down on the mat, lift the hips, pull the tailbone under, and push up. And this is bridge, setu bandha. If you want to, you can try this. Roll to one shoulder. I'm rolling to my left. My right is lifting. And I'm going to tuck my right shoulder blade underneath. Roll to the left. Tuck my to right, Roll to the right. Tuck my left shoulder blade underneath. And now I've got my shoulders like totally tucked under me. And I'm going to interlace my fingers underneath me and try to straighten out my arms. Take a few deep breaths. If you want to take this a step further, lift the heels, place your fingertips underneath the heels, lift the hips, tuck the shoulder blades under, and lift all the way up. This is called uh, Chatus Padasana, which I think is four foot pose. Not positive about that definition. And release. And then we'll just roll it together. So bring your knees sort of into your chest and just kind of get to find some length in the spine. Now some of you, maybe you're looking for that full bridge, the full wheel, Urdhva Dhanurasana, and you can do that. Now if you like, hands up by your shoulders. I know this is going to be, <laughs> I'm missing out a lot, of, a lot of people on this one, but this, you know, this is how you get into it. And I'll show you a little bit easier way, maybe in another video. So I've got my fingertips pointed down toward my feet. My elbows are up. I've lifted my hips. And now I'm going to try to lift my head and lift all the way up. Then tuck the head and come back down. Another day we'll work a little bit more on that one. All right. That was a lot of backbending. And now I want to show you a restorative backbend. It's kind of fun, and it's also very relaxing. So I'm going to take my bolster, um, and you can use a stack of blankets. Just make sure that they're uh, firm, and um, you may want to, you know, stack them up a little bit higher if you've got if you've got blankets. This kind of blanket, like a Mexican cotton blanket. Anyway, I'm going to sit on the end of this bolster, and I'm going to roll back. I'm going to roll back until my shoulders hit the floor. And I'm just going to relax my arms out to the side. So my chest is lifted. My head is down. Normally in class, I would like use a strap and tie people's knees together. But um, didn't do it today, so that, that's, that's fine. It's fine not to have your knees tied together. But it's just one more less thing that you have to think about. Some of you might actually be able to stretch your legs out. And then we'll just relax here for a moment. Breathe in and out.
if you can, you could stay here for, you know, 10, 20 minutes. And then to come out, bend your knees, lift your hips, and I'm just going to push the whole bolster down and stretch my legs out and just cross my feet and lay flat for a moment. We want to lay flat after we do that for a while because, um, especially if you're in it for a long time, because technically your heart's above your head, it's a little bit of an inversion. So just to get your brain acclimated to um, not being upside down, we want to lay flat for a moment. And then bend your knees, roll to the side, and push yourself up. And that's all I have today for back bends. Uh, again, let me know if you like this. Hit the like button, um, comments, anything else you'd like to see. Thinking about doing a restorative video so that we can all kind of unstress um, from the last couple months of this new year, 2021. Let me know what you think about that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, like and subscribe. Bye for now. See you later.